Hello again, Math 142 students. After that exciting first part of a vectors video, here's your second one. And you notice we talked about adding and subtracting and multiplying by scalars of vectors. Now we're going to talk about how to multiply vectors. And that's a little difficult. We have to define two new products. And the first product we're going to define is the dot product. So how do you multiply two vectors? Well, one useful product is called the dot product, and the dot product is given by this definition. The dot product between two vectors u and v is given by u dot v equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine theta, where theta is the angle between u and v, and theta, theta is between 0 and 180 degrees. So, for example, Let's suppose that the magnitude of u is 5, and the magnitude of v is 10, and theta is 60. What is u dot v? Well, u dot v equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine of 60 degrees. Now, the magnitude of u is 5, and the magnitude of v is 10. And a cosine of 60 <coughs> is one half, right? So that's going to be 25. And you say, wow, I've just multiplied two vectors. A good question is, why would I care? What does this mean? We'll get to that in a minute as the idea behind this dot product. But first, I can hear, even though I'm far away, that you guys are banging your fists on the table and are saying, wait, I need proof. Okay, we're usually not given the magnitude of two vectors and the angle between them. So it's nice to have a formula to derive the vector formula components to calculate the dot product. So we're going to derive it now using the diagram below and the law of cosines. So let's suppose this is the origin. So you have the y-axis right here and the x-axis right here. And so let's call vector v, v sub 1, v sub 2, and vector u, u sub 1, and u sub 2, okay? Now, you can think about this vector from here to here as u minus v, or v minus u, whichever one you want to use. I'm going to use u minus v. So this vector right here is u minus v. Now, this is a triangle, and the, mag the length of this side is the magnitude of u, the length of this side is the magnitude of v, and the length of this side is the magnitude of u minus v. Now, by the law of cosines, you know that c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. Now, magnitude of A, A is the magnitude of U, we'll say, all right? And B, so I'll call this A, and B is the magnitude of V. And this is point C right here in the law of cosines. So I'm going to use theta for that. Magnitude of U, magnitude of V cosine theta, okay? Now, the magnitude of u, if you remember from the last lesson, is u1 squared plus u2 squared. And the magnitude of v is v1 squared plus v2 squared, okay? Now, if you look at this right here, u magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta, that is the dot product, so I'm going to write down magnitude of u times magnitude of v. Now, over here, we have u minus v, and you know that u minus v is u1 minus v1 and u2 minus v2. And therefore, the magnitude of u minus v is the square root of u1 minus v1 
squared and u2 minus v2 squared. All right, so if I look at this, if I square both sides, square both of these, and I now put this into the law of cosines, c is equal to this, so that's none more than this. We have determined that u squared is this, u1 squared plus u2 squared, and v squared is this, v1 squared plus v2 squared, minus 2 times u dot v. Okay, again, magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta. This ends up being u1 squared minus 2 u1 v1 plus v1 squared. Nothing like multiplying that out, right? u2 squared minus 2 u2 v2 plus v2 squared equals all of this. Oh, isn't this algebra just wonderful? Don't you love it? Oh, my hand's getting tired writing this all down. But if you look at this, u1 squares disappear, v1 squares disappear, u2 squares disappear v2 squares disappear. You notice a minus 2 here, a minus 2, a minus 2 here. Divide both sides by minus 2, and you get this. And this is the useful formula for the dot product right here. The dot product, or inner product, of two vectors, u equals u1, u2, and v equals v1, v2, is given by this. u dot v equals u1, v1, plus u2, v2. This gives me a way to calculate the dot product when it's in component form. Uh, the other, the previous definition, I had to know the magnitude of both of these vectors and the angle in between. Now I don't have to know that anymore. So let's do some quick dot products. So remember, u dot v equals u1 v1 plus u2 v2. So the first coordinate of each of them, 3 times 1, plus the second coordinate of each of them, negative 5 times negative 1, that gives you 3 plus 5, or 8. Now, don't be fooled. You know your author likes to use component form. So here we have 2i plus 3j dots negative 6i plus 4j. I like to write that back in the other form. It doesn't really matter, but now I can use that dot product idea. u1 times v1, 2 times negative 6, and 3 times negative 4. Well, you notice that gives you negative 12 plus 12. And that dot product is 0, right? So that's kind of interesting. If I draw these two vectors, Two, three. Okay, so there's the first one right there. And the second one, negative six, positive four. It sure looks like these two vectors are perpendicular, and it turns out that's correct. One of the properties of the dot product we want to look at is that if the dot product between two vectors is zero, then these are perpendicular. Now, we use the word orthogonal to mean perpendicular when we're talking about vectors. So here's a theorem. The dot product between two non-zero vectors is zero if and only if the vectors are orthogonal. Proof. This follows directly from the first definition above. Since if two vectors are orthogonal, the angle between them is 90 degrees. So since u dot v equals magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine 90, and cosine 90 is 0, then it has to be that u dot v, if they are perpendicular, is 0. Furthermore, if they are perpendicular, you can look at this and say, well, that means that cosine theta has to equal 0, so theta has to be 90 degrees. So we can not only, is this an important idea, that the dot product between two non-vectors is zero if and only if they are perpendicular or orthogonal, but we can also rewrite the dot product formula 
to help us find the angle between two vectors. So if you take the formula u dot v equals magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta, and you solve for cosine theta, you get this, u dot v over magnitude of u times magnitude of v. This gives you a practical way to calculate the angles between the two vectors. So let's take a look at this idea. Let's look at the vector u, which is negative 1, 3. So I'll just draw it for you right here. And the vector v, which is 2, 4. So this is the angle in between, the angle theta. So I'm going to calculate the dot product, u dot v equals negative 1 times 2 plus 3 times 4. That equals negative 2 plus 12, or 10. So cosine theta equals the magnitude of u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So that's 10. The magnitude of u, well, that's pretty easy. The magnitude of u is the square root of negative 1 squared plus 3 squared, so that's the square root of 10, right? And the magnitude of v is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared. That's the square root of 20. So I have theta equals inverse cosine of 10 over the square root of 10 times the square root of 20. So let's do that. If I do that all, I get that theta is 45 degrees. Okay? So that kind of gives you the idea of what is going on here with the dot product. And one of the reasons the dot product is useful is it allows us to know the angle between these two vectors. Another useful construction with the note vector is the notation of projection. Consider the drawing below. Here's a vector u and another vector v. The vector u is the sum of these two very dark, bold vectors I have here. This one is called the projection of u onto v. And this one is called the orthogonal projection of u onto v. Now, your book may not use these notations. They are pretty traditional, but they may not use those notations entirely. Um, they might say that this is the vector u and this is the vector v, and you want the component of u parallel to v and the component of u perpendicular to v. But those means the same thing. So here's the idea behind this. If this is the angle in between them, theta, okay, it's not too hard to see okay, that this makes a right triangle right here. So I would like to find the distance from here to here. Well, you know that cosine theta, and I'll call that distance x, equals x over the magnitude of u. Or x equals the magnitude of u cosine theta. Now, a little shenanigans here. It's not too hard to see that x equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine theta divided by the magnitude of v. So I just multiplied and divided by the magnitude of v. Now, why did I do that? Because what is this top? This top is u dot v, right? Over the magnitude of v. Now, this is a number. This just gives me the length of this vector. To calculate this vector, you need the unit vector in the direction of v. So the unit vector in the direction of v is v over the magnitude of v. And then I'm going to multiply that by this number, this scalar here, x. And this gives me my formula for the projection. The projection of v onto u, u onto v, OK, I typed that in wrong, is u dot v okay, over the magnitude of v squared times v. 
And the orthogonal projection is just the subtraction between these two, since these two add up to this. Now, let's take a look at how I do this. So, here is an example. Here is the vector u. So there's the vector u. And here's the vector v, 5, negative 5, OK? All right. So we want to project this onto this. So I want the parallel one, which is this right here. And I want the perpendicular one, which might be this right here, OK? So for the parallel one, all right, that's going to be u dot v over the magnitude of v squared times the vector v. So u dot v is 6 times 5, or 30, plus 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10, over the magnitude of v. And the magnitude of v is 25 plus 25, or the square root of 50. Squared times v. So this is not too hard to see that this is 20 over 50 times v, or 2 fifths times v. But what's v? v is 5, negative 5. So this ends up being 2, negative 2, if you distribute that 2 fifths in. Now, so this is 2, negative 2. And this one is, since this plus this has to equal u, this one right here is going to be u minus 2, negative 2. OK? So that would be 6, 2, minus 2, negative 2. And that would be 4, 4. So that gives you the projection and the orthogonal projection. Or the component per parallel to v and the component perpendicular to v. OK? So that's a little bit about uh, product and some of the operations. What are some examples that we can do for dot product? So here's kind of a classic example of using a force to resolve it into components. A car weighing 3,000 pounds is parked on a driveway that is inclined 15 degrees to the angle horizontal. So here's what we have. We have a driveway that's 15 degrees to the horizontal. And you've got a car here. Again, you'll see why I'm not an art major. Here's your car, OK? So that's your car right there. And the brake is keeping it in place, right? Now, we want to find the magnitude of the force this that's holding this up. So I'm going to redraw this without my fancy car on there. So I'm just going to put a dot right here. And there's a vector f that I want right here. Now, this car weighs 3,000 pounds. Weight is the weight due to gravity, and so that's going to be your 3,000 pounds going straight down. Now, if you put the origin right here, this right here could be represented by minus 3,000j, that vector right there. So what I'm trying to do is I am trying to see what is the component of this on this vector. So this vector weight, what is the component on this vector force right here? So this vector, by the way, is pretty easy to get. It's got 15 degrees. We can find a unit vector in that direction, namely cosine of 15 degrees, sine of 15 degrees, right? So I'm trying to look for this one. And I like this notation, the, this notation rather than the i's and j's. I want to find the component of this onto that. So that's going to be the dot product. I'll call this u, and I'll call this v. That's going to be the dot product of u dot v, which is going to be 0 times cosine of 15 plus or minus 3,000 
times cosine sine of 15. Okay? Now, if you do the arithmetic, that's just minus 3,000 sine of 15. Now, the magnitude that I always want to divide by is this one. This is already a unit vector, but just to check, let's say the magnitude of V squared is the square root of cosine of 15 squared plus sine of 15 squared. But come on, guys. This is big daddy, right? So this is just minus 3,000 sine of 15. So that is my magnitude there. And I want to take that, and I want to multiply it by my vector v, which is cosine of 15 degrees, sine of 15 degrees. That is the force that is right here. So this force, by the way, would be going this way, this vector right here. This force, this projection, would go on there and would be going this way. So you could change the sign and have it go the other way if you want to think about what force would I need to do this. But I want the magnitude of the force, okay, um, that is required to prevent the car from rolling down the driveway, okay? Um, so to do that, I will just find the magnitude of this vector right here. So that's going to be, since this vector is a unit vector, that's going to be none other than 3,000 times sine of 15 times cosine 15 squared plus 3,000 times sine of 15 sine of 15 squared. But remember, that's a unit vector. Those two things, this is going to be my component right here. So I will do that, 3,000 sine of 15 degrees. And that's going to be 776.5 right there. Okay, we have that right there as my force. That many pounds of force is needed. Now, this one, the magnitude of the force experienced by the driveway, would mean I'm looking for what's going on the driveway here, and that's the perpendicular force. So in that case, I would take this vector right here, Okay, my vector, my projection, and I'd subtract it from that, and that would give me the magnitude, of, or that would give me the vector that's on the driveway, and I then can figure out the magnitude of that. Okay, another application that's useful in physics is this notion of work. If F is a constant force whose direction is the same as the direction AB, then the work is defined as the magnitude of force times the magnitude of the direction. And it's a very useful little application in physics. If F is a force in any direction, then the magnitude of, then work is F dot A times B. So let's take a look at an example here. We're going to find the work done by a 10 pound force acting in the direction of 1, 4, moving an object 3 feet from 0, 0 to 3, 0. Okay. So here's the origin. Here's three. So I want to. I have a. I have an object right here that's ten pounds, right? Now again, thinking about gravity, that could be minus ten j. It's just the force of gravity pushing that down, and that's minus ten j. So that is going to be my object right there, right? Now I'm going to find the work done by a 10-pound force, okay, a 10-pound force, so I'm going to pull a 10-pound force acting in the direction of 1, 4, okay? So a 10-pound force acting in the direction of 1, 4. So 1, 4, let me draw a new picture for you guys. Start this problem over again. So I'm going to draw the xy coordinate plane, and I've got a force, I've got an object at 0, and I'm going to move it 3. Okay, and then I've got another one, a force, in the direction 1, 4. Here's my force. And that force is 10 pounds. So let's first figure out what the force is. Well, if it has a magnitude, the magnitude of the force is 10. So I need a unit vector in the direction of F. So I'm going to take F and divide it by... Um, the magnitude of F, that's 1, 4, 
divided by the magnitude of 1 4, which is the square root of 17. And I'm going to multiply that by 10. 10 times f over the magnitude of f is going to be 10 square root of 17, 1 4. Okay, so that is my force vector right here. This is my vector f. And my vector ab is the direction I'm moving in. I'm going from 0, 0 to 3, 0. So ab is nothing more than 3, 0. So I'm going to do force times ab. And that's going to be this. This is force. 10 square root of 17. If I multiply that 10 over square root of 17 in here, I get 40 square root of 17. And AB is 3, 0. So my total work done is 3, 30 over the square root of 17. And if we're using the US system, the units for work are foot pounds. So this gives you a little bit about the idea of a dot product. The important things of a dot product is dot product is 0 then the mag then the two vectors are orthogonal or 90 degrees apart if the dot product is not zero you can still find it by using that formula cosine theta equals u dot v over magnitude of u magnitude of v and we can do some application problems uh, especially about weight and force um, involving the dot product. I hope you guys are having a good week. Don't hesitate to contact me via email if you have any questions, and I will see you on Monday.